Welcome to the Newsome MMA betting podcast sponsored by CBD Life UK. I'm your host as always, Newsome, and tonight we're going to be breaking down UFC Fight Night 131 from Utica, New York. Just a quick note for anybody who is unsure, as I don't want anybody to miss the fights. This is a rare Friday night fight card, so make sure that's in your calendars. And with that said, here comes the breakdowns. As always, I've got my bets listed for you. I'll break those down in full. Anything else that I haven't bet on at the end of the card, I'll quick fire off. I'll give you a pick, a method of victory, and also a reason why i haven't bet the fight as well so the first full breakdown on the podcast we've got julio arce versus daniel tamer now it's a fight that i I was really really interested in pre-tape and obviously jumped straight into it and i think it was the first fight that i did tape study as well and it just the the pre-tape lean definitely came out after tape as well i've got 3.5 units on julio arce at minus 150 um it's going to be a really good fight and it's predominantly going to take place on the feet as well and that's where I really favour Arce here. He's a golden, a golden Gloves winner, he's an ex-professional kickboxer, he trains out of the Tiger Shulman team as well. He's a strong southpaw fighter, he's got a solid straight left, he's got quick movement in and out of range also, in and out of dirty boxing as well. Um, he's got incredible footwork and the thing that I love about Arce is he's always conscious of where his feet are at all times and you really do notice this when he's fighting uh, an orthodox fighter. His foot is always his lead leg is always just on the outside of his opponent's lead leg, and it it's just it's just controlling the distance really well, and just making him uh, really aware of where he is and where to move, and when when the right time is to come in and out. He, he's just such a smart fighter. Um, he's also got great distance management, as I've just mentioned. He's got great cardio. He's got a good chin. He outputs a lot of volume, and his striking game is just so seamless and calm. And I did mention this on my last podcast, and I have mentioned it before. The one fighter that stands out to me when mentioning calm strikers is Shane Burgos, and he just has that similar calmness inside the cage. And ironically, Shane Burgos is coming from the same camp as him as, him as well, so he's got good training partners also. Um, Tamer, on the other hand, though, he is a decorated striker himself. You know, he's he's been doing Muay Thai since I think he was like 14. So he's definitely no slouch on, on the feet. But although he, he is more explosive than, than Arce, I think he just comes forward a little reckless, recklessly at times. And that leaves openings for his opponents. And especially when he's fighting somebody that is a crisp solid striker that's going to find them openings and that's exactly what Arce is I think that um, he can definitely find uh, the the holes in Tamer's striking he's Arce is that calibre of striker and um, Tamer's gas tank's also really questionable as well we saw in his last fight against Danny Henry I know it was uh, short notice but he came out hard in that first round he really tried to put Danny Henry away and he couldn't do it and then from then on he just he, he lost the fight because he slowed down, he gassed, he slowed down. And that was the first time that he'd gone out the first round as well. So it does raise a lot of question marks for me. If he can't get Arce out there in, in round one, what is he going to look like in round two? And to be honest with you, I don't see a first round finish for for, for Daniel Tamer here. I don't think Arce is, is going to be that sloppy to to get caught in round one if he is i'll be really surprised because he's a really really good striker um or he's aware of danger as well he, he doesn't tend to get hit too much and like i said just outputs a lot of volume so i will be surprised if danny henry does uh sorry daniel tamer does manage to to close distance and and knock him out in round one it really would be and then like i say i've got questions to what he's going to look like in round in round two and three because i say isn't going to slow down he's going to come forward he's going to be keep keep peppering him with shots um i just feel like it can go one of two ways this fight because of uh of daniel tamer's style and it does depend on how daniel tamer comes out i think he'll either come out uh like i said really aggressive in round one not put arce away i think arce will weather a storm <clears throat> i think if that happens then i say he may even take round one you, you know you don't know he might be hitting hitting him back with uh, with a good counter striking game and winning points that way <coughs> excuse me um but then in rounds two and three i see i say really putting in put, putting it on a potentially tired tamer and you know win, winning winning rounds two and three I'm, I'm not sure i'm not sure if he puts tamer away himself but you know i could definitely see that as a path to victory the second way i could potentially see this go in 
is if Tame has recognised that he can't come out like a bull in round one and he does have to reserve himself and just try and look for the opening himself rather than just committing in round one and then ultimately failing and then losing rounds two and three and losing on the judges' scorecards. But I think if he comes out that way, I think Arce is going to have just more time to, to pick his shots, to, to think inside of there, to really... Uh, really work work Daniel Tamer. So I, I just think whichever way Tamer comes out, I think Arce is going to have the better of him. Um, ultimately, I just I just think Arce is going to be uh, going to be in and out. His movement's going to be great. He's going to be uh, angling off. Uh, I think Tamer is going to slow down um, because just another thing to add, Danny Henry uh, was at the weight class above. So now Tamer's got to cut more uh, got to cut more weight than usual. So. I just, I don't know. I've, I've got a lot of question marks with, with Daniel Tamer right now. Ultimately, I just think he's going to get outpointed. Uh, I think the, the volume's going to be there for Arce and uh, the skill and the quality difference is going to show. And I think Arce is going to win on the judges' scorecards. Um, 29, 28, maybe 30, 27. It all depends how that first round goes because if Tamer does come out strong, he could potentially win that first round. But I just don't, I don't see him winning round rounds two or three. I don't see him dominating uh, a fighter like Julio Arce o- over three rounds. So, 3.5 units at minus 150. Now, the next fight to break down, we've got uh, Jean Volante against Sam Alvey. Um, so, people, <laughs> you might be thinking, whoa, what are you doing? You know, you're crazy. You're, you're betting a Sam Alvey fight. But, listen, I've got a really good record when it comes to betting Sam Alvey fights, whether it's betting for him, whether betting against him, whether betting props. I've got a hundred percent record betting Sam Alvey fights. I just find I find Sam Alvey very, very easy to read, easy to study. You know what you're gonna get from him. So then what it comes down to from that point is really trying to understand his opponent. So in a normal fight when you tape study and you sort of you look at one guy and then you look at the other guy and then you try and piece it all together and see see who's gonna have the advantage and where and stance and things like that. You don't get that with Sam Alvey fights. You know what Sam Alvey's gonna deliver. That's that's great. That Sam Alvey's your product. Then you move then you just focus in all your all your pretty much all your tape study just on on one guy and how he can uh, work Sam Alvey or how Sam Alvey can work this guy and I also think Jean Volante is a really easy fighter to uh, <clears throat> excuse me to dissect as well um, he's, I don't think he's, I don't think Jean Volante is the fighter he used to be uh, I think he's he's slowed down a lot um, he doesn't really put combinations together too much anymore um, he, he gasses he's got one of the worst gas tanks in my opinion in the UFC even you look at his last fight against uh uh, Burroughs and Burroughs is now cut by the way but in that fight Volante was the one moving forward not a fast not a high pace he was just walking Burroughs down Burroughs uh, was accepting uh, moving backwards against the cage and you know not a lot happened uh, there wasn't many sh- many strikes thrown <clears throat> there also wasn't combinations it was just one shot one sh- one shot constantly um a really slow paced fight, yet Jean Volante still tired towards the end of that fight. Not as bad as what he looked against maybe Patrick Cummins, because uh, Patrick Patrick Cummins did press him, he did work him and um, really drain his cardio out of him. But the Burroughs fight was totally that pace was totally dictated by Jean Volante, and like I said, it, it wasn't at a high pace, and he still managed to tire. Now, looking at Sam Alvey, first of all. And the things I like about him, he's got elite takedown defense. So I know Jean Valente does train with like Chris Weidman, so he's got good wrestlers there. But I don't believe he's going to be able to take Alvi down, even if he wanted to. But Valente hasn't really shown recently that he is looking to get a fight to the to the ground that desperately. Um, but Ramazan Amiv struggled to take Sam Alvi down, and you know he's a Dagestani-born Russian. Um, Sam Alvi's got a solid chin. Uh, he fights to adversity well. You saw that in the late he's fight. Late he's messed his leg up within like the first ten seconds, and he still managed to last the distance. And even had late he's in, I won't say any any dangerous positions, but you know he was still fighting back. Um, like I said, you always know what you're going to get from Sam Alvey in the cage. So that's another thing that I like about him. Um, the other thing to mention is, uh, I love the timing of his jump up to light heavyweight because. I just think it's perfect. His weight cuts were getting tough for him as he was getting older. He was slowing down. And at middleweight, the lighter fighters were just proving too quick for him. And it, it was 
at this point where you know you really you really could start fading Sam Alvey. Um, but like I said, he's moved up to light heavyweight. Um, he's had one fight there against uh, Pratnyau. I think he took that on a short notice. I believe I could be wrong about that. I'm not sure, but he fought Martin Pratnyau. Um, I actually picked Pratnyau to win that. I didn't bet it, so my 100% betting record still stands here. Um, but I had Pratnyau to win that, and totally shocked of how Alvi, how good Alvi looked in in that fight. Um, he he just looks like. It, like I say, it was just the right thing for him to do to move up. His his card his weight cut's not as bad, so his cardio's better. Um, also the the speed of the fighters has slowed down, so now he's facing slightly slower fighters, which again is going to improve his performances as well. Um, so yeah, I just really like Sam Alvey in this fight. If you can't tell, so uh, I've got two point five units on Sam Alvey at minus one twenty. I'm really surprised at this line. It opened at minus one ninety. I thought that was maybe a little bit too steep. So I was thinking, you know, maybe one minus one seven five. It, it would settle at, but it dropped all the way down to minus one twenty. I think it's about minus one fifty now. Um, and yeah, I just really like him. Like I've said, Valente is a, a a very low a low output fighter. Um, and he also moves forward slowly, he plods forward slowly. His head very rarely leaves the center line, which makes him really hittable. Sam Alvey's good at countering. Um, that was his. That's been his game in the UFC. His counter striking. He allows fighters to come to him. But then against Pratnyau, he was a little bit more aggressive, mixing uh, leg kicks as well. So really, really liked his performance against uh, Pratnyau, even though Pratnyau was a bit stupid towards the end, which led to him getting knocked out. Um, ultimately. I think Alvey's going to take Valante's best shots early on. Um, and I think he'll use his counter-striking game early on um, just to make Valante eat some shots uh, eat some shots back. So, Valante, like I say, I think Valante will have a little bit a little bit of success within like maybe the first two, two and a half minutes. Um, but Alvey will be hitting him with, with some back. But I think the mixture of Valante moving forward and potentially making... Alvi eat his best shots and Alvi firing back and really working uh, working Volante and causing some damage. I think the mixture of that will take its toll on Volante's gas tank. And honestly, I, I don't I don't see Volante looking the same fighter come the second round. Um, I think the at this point in the second round, Alvi will really turn into the aggressor. I think he'll start to really wear Volante down. And in this fight. Alvi's gas tank will hold up fine. And uh, I actually see him finishing Valente late in the fight, maybe the third round. Um, I think the first round is going to be a bit of back and forth. That'll tire Valente. I think Alvi will really work Valente in that second round and then come early in the third round. I think I think Alvi will put him away. So I've got Alvi to win via TKO late in the fight. Moving on to the next breakdown. <clears throat> We've got... And the final breakdown, we've got Desmond Green versus Gleison Tibau. Now, I really liked this fight when it was announced. Um, I didn't really know what to expect with, with the line. I have paid a, a little bit. I wouldn't say a little bit too... Well, yeah, it is a little bit too much, but not too much that I don't see value in it because I would never bet anything that doesn't have value. So I bet Desmond Green. I've got four units on him at minus 250. Personally, I lined it around minus 225 um, in my notes before the, the odds were released. So it's a little... A tiny, tiny bit higher than what I wanted to pay, but I just think he wins, and I think is I think when it's as clear cut as I think it's going to be, then I'll take that minus two fifty shot. I, you know, recently you'll have noticed if you look at uh, if you look back at my record, I haven't really been been paying high prices for fighters, but I do think it's justified in this case. Um, Green's a really athletic fighter, uh, and he's one that's well schooled as well in in all aspects of MMA. He's quick on the feet. He's always on his toes, moving in and out of range, exiting off angles. Um, he's also uh, an NCAA D1 wrestler. Uh, he uses wrestling as well to really mix up his game inside the cage. Um, but the other thing to mention is coming with that D1 wrestling background, he's also got elite takedown defense, and it really does take uh, a high pressured takedown artist to take him down such as Prezeres in his last fight but they were three for three for takedowns if you look back at the the fight metric stats so you know <clears throat> although Prezeres is is known for his takedown and Prezeres came in massively overweight uh, on the scales which means he'll have been 
you know, the far bigger fighter when when they were stepping in the cage. It have all it have almost been at middleweight, the the weight of a middleweight fighter when he was fighting Desmond Green, who is potentially a small lightweight as well. You know, he's he's fought featherweight also. Um, so the size difference there was huge. Um, but he still did get takedowns on Michelle Prezeras, which is quite impressive because not many seem to be able to do that. The other thing that comes with Green's uh, takedown defence is he's scrambling and the spring in his feet. The second that uh, his back hits the mat or his, his bum hits the mat, he, he's bouncing straight back up, springing straight back up to his feet, um, doesn't accept position, doesn't stay still, you know, always active. And that's what I love about him. Even to the point where, <coughs> excuse me, even to the point where Rustim Habilov, a Dagestani-born Russian was struggling to take him down. Seriously, seriously struggling to take him down. And even at the end of the third round in that fight, Desmond Green scored a takedown on Rustem Avalov and took his back. So, from that point of view, I think that that's where I really like... That's where I really give Green the edge in this fight because Gleison Tibau is uh, known for his brute pressure takedown style of fighting, you know. Uh, he'll throw bombs at you to close distance and he'll he'll ultimately just try and use his strength and his power to rag you to the floor. Um, that ain't going to be easy against Desmond Green. And I think that the older Thibaut gets, he's, he's never had the greatest gas tank anyway. He, he has shown in a lot of his fights to gas after round one, well, to tire after round one. Um, this was all post, uh, sorry, pre-USADA though. Post-USADA, Thibaut's looking a, sh a shell of his old self, not looking not looking like the fighter he once was. So I do think if he's, uh, if he's really trying to use brute force to get Desmond Green out, uh, sorry, Desmond Green down to the mat, I think he may get one takedown, he may get two. I think Green will sp spring straight back up to his feet. He'll not only demoralise Thibau, but he'll also uh, expend some of his energy as well. And I think the longer the fight goes on, the easier it's just going to get for Green. Um and don't be surprised here if you see Green take Tibau down either, you know. Like I said, like I mentioned, he took Prezeres down three times. He can definitely take Tibau down. I think Tibau, I don't think Tibau will be the same fighter on the bottom as what Prezeres is. Prezeres is uh, also, you know, a second or third degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I just feel that all Green has to do here is dodge the bombs which I'll talk about in just a second, and also keep the keep the fight vertical, or just stay off his back, because, you know, he could take Green down himself. Like I said, I think Tibau's going to have a tough, tough time taking him down. Then I've just mentioned the bombs that were thrown. Tibau scored four knockouts in 46 professional fights. That's four knockouts in 46 professional fights, and he hasn't scored a knockout in just under eight years. I think it was... Uh, 2000 and, uh, 2010, I think he last scored a knockout. So it's been a very long time since he's put somebody away. So even though he does possess the overhand bombs, clearly something's not right there. They're not connecting or, you know, he's not set, disguising them well or something. But I just, I don't see Green getting caught with um, with the one bomb. I mean, if he does and he goes out, then, you know, it is what it is. But I just, I really don't see it happening. Ultimately... Like I've said, I think um, I think Tibau will pursue takedowns early on in the fight. He might have some success, but the success will definitely be short-lived. I think the speed and the difference in quality of striking will play a huge part in the fight. Um, and I think Green over three rounds will just be too much for Tibau. Um, I think Tibau will eat a lot of shots. He'll gas. Uh, the, ta the tank will deteriorate for sure. Um, and as the fight goes longer, I, it'll get easier for Green. Now, I do think Green's going to win a decision. I think he's going to win a 30-27 decision, uh, but just one thing to mention is do not rule a knockout out here. The reason being is Islam Makachev, who came in against Gleison Tibau, he knocked him out within, I think it was like 30 seconds, it was his third strike, second or third strike that he knocked him out with. Um, Tibau hasn't looked that, uh, uh, he, he hasn't looked that soft ever really, I mean, Makachev's not a knockout artist. That was his only. That was his only his third knockout in his career. And without going back through all his fights, I would, I would put money on actually that being potentially 
the the only flash knockout he's ever scored. I, I would imagine the other the other two TKOs have maybe come by a ground and pound or something. But he floored Tibau early in that fight, and the punch was clean. He connected clean, but I just don't think uh, Makachev possesses that much power personally. So don't rule out a Desmond Green knockout here. If I think if Makachev can do it, I think Green will be able to do it as well. But I am going with the decision. I think it'll be a 30-27 decision, uh, quite comfortable for uh, Desmond Green. So that's it for the full breakdowns. Um, moving on to the quick fire round. Quick, quick fire round. We've got Jimmy Rivera versus Marlon Marais. Now I actually taped this fight because the lines were close. Uh, I had a lean on Marlon Marais. Uh, I just couldn't bet it though. The reason I couldn't bet it is um, I felt that Marlon Marais had been dropped a few times. Jimmy Rivera does have very deceptive power. You know, it's not brutal power, but he drops people as well. You know, he dropped Almeida twice, I think it was, um, and he, he's dropped a, a, a few others as well. So I didn't totally trust Marais' uh, chin in, in this spot. But then alternatively, uh, I, I just think Rivera slows down in three round fights so I'm really interested to see what he looks like uh, over five rounds so there's there's red flags definitely from that point of view and questions that I just don't think can be answered until we've seen this fight so therefore I can't bet the fight ultimately my pick is going to be Marlon Marias. Um I think I think Marias might score a late knockout I think it could be round four, round five, if his if his cardio is still holding up it, itself, which I've seen no signs of him really gassing in any fight. So, yeah, I'm going to go for uh, a late round. I'll go round five stoppage via TKO. Um, the next quick fire pick we've got Gregor G the Gift Gillespie versus Vince Pichel. I love both of these guys. Um, I've cashed on both of these guys a couple of times. I just think this is a really really tough spot for for Vince Pichelli I think Gregor Gillespie is uh, the future of this division I think he is going to run through most people in this division his striking is looking better he he always looks for the finish in you know I, d I don't really need to mention his wrestling he, he's just insanely good I genuinely think Gillespie is a very very uh top prospect in this division and his ceiling is so high um i think gillespie will take vince pichel down with ease uh i think the first round pichel's tough as shit you know i think he'll stay in there but i think second round is going to tire from the takedowns um and ultimately i think what's going to be going through his head is you know shit what what can i do here now like seriously i i cannot do anything and i think at that point uh maybe mentally he might start to uh start to lose the fight and i think gregor gillespie will capitalize on that and i think he'll get uh, a tko win so i've got gregor gillespie via tko next we've got walt harris versus daniel spitz i did want to take this fight for a bet but the price is too high i think walt harris is like minus 300 and i'm not paying that for heavyweights um, as you can tell, Walt Harris is my pick. I think he's, he is going to get the job done by knockout. Don't really rate Daniel Spitz that highly. Uh, I think he's hittable. Um, biggest win is the TK of Anthony Hamilton, but you know every man and his dogs knocking that dude out. So, I, I yeah, I think Walt Harris is going to knock him out in round one. Next pick, we've got Jake Ellenberger versus Ben Saunders. Now, uh, the consensus on. MMA Twitter is probably Ellenberg is going to get the job done, but I'm going to go the other way. I think both these dudes, for a start, have got absolutely awful chins, glass chins. They've been knocked out so many times now in the career. They're both at the end of the career. They've both fully declined. Um, it really could be a case of whoever catches who first wins the fight. And I just like Ben Saunders here. I think that although Ellenberg uh, could potentially have a takedown threat and you know try and grind it out, Saunders is the bigger, longer fighter, and uh, I could maybe see a potential head kick knockout, um, you know, a shin to the chin. So I'm going Ben Saunders to win by TKO. Next fight, we've got Ciara Eubanks versus Lauren Murphy. Um, now, I mean, I don't think either of these 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 girls are that good. If I'm if I'm being totally honest, uh, my pick is Eubanks. I think she's just, I think she's slightly faster and better on the feet. Um, she has also uh, got jiu-jitsu as well on the mat. I think Lauren Murphy is the bigger girl. I think she is going to try and 
uh, muscle Eubanks to the mat, look for the takedown. Ultimately, though, I don't think the conviction in the takedowns are that great. So I think when she's coming in, she's just going to be getting caught by strikes, which is going to halt the takedown, push her back a little bit, and then she'll come in again. It'll just be rinse and repeat. So I think Eubanks will win a decision on the scorecards. Next, we've got Nick Lentz versus David Tamor, the brother of Daniel Tamor, that I bet against tonight. Um, yeah, I, Nick Lentz is, seems to be a little bit of a one-trick pony. You know, he, he's got a guillotine that you can catch anybody with. Um, but the thing is here, David Tabor isn't going to be shooting in for a lazy takedown like what we saw with Will Brooks. Um, in fact, if anything, it's going to be Nick Lentz that's going to try and stick to Tamor to take him down. But again, similar to what I've just said with Eubanks and Murphy, I think when Lentz comes in, I think he's just going to repeatedly get caught with shots and not be able to um, to shoot a takedown and lock the hands together to, to take David Tamor down. I mean, if he can take Tamor down in in two rounds and hold top position, then it's going to be it's going to be really uh, sketchy times for David Tamor. But I just don't see it happening. Um, but then I, Lentz is tough as well, so I don't really see Tamor knocking him out. I think Tamor is going to win a comfortable decision here. And next we've got Bilal Muhammad against. Chance Rencontre, I think is how you pronounce his name. Again, I could be totally wrong. Um, Chance, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too sure about. I haven't really seen or heard of this dude before, um, so I, I can't really give a solid breakdown on this. He came in at short notice, and I just, I just haven't taped it or looked into it because I thought the line would be too wide, which it is. It's like minus four hundred for Bilal, which I sort of anticipated anyway. Um, so without knowing too much about Chance, I'm I'm just gonna say Bilal Muhammad comes out and uh, uses his vet experience and uh, uses the the huge gap in skill, quality potentially, um, and uh, scores a decision win on the scorecards. Next fight we've got Jessica Aguilar versus Jody Escobel. Um, not impressed with Aguilar at all. Um, She's, I, I think a lot of people will be deceived by a record. She's got a really good record. Um, but honestly, it's not really all it, all it's cracked out to be at all. I mean, um, just looking at her record now, it's 19 and 6, which is, is looks awesome for, for women's MMA. Um, she got completely outclassed by Courtney Casey, which is never a good sign. Um, Jodie Azkabel, the only fight we can really judge her on is... Uh, the fight against Karolina Kovalkiewicz, where she got, again, completely outclassed. Um, but most girls will in that division, as we saw with Felice Herrig in her last fight against Karolina. So, based on the lack of top competition, um, I, I can't bet I can't bet this fight. Uh, but I do like the dog in this one, Jodie Escobel, and I think she'll, uh, she'll, she'll get that decision when just moving in and out, using a strike, staying away from Aguilar, staying on the outside. So Jody Escobel to win by unanimous decision. Next, we've got Johnny Eduardo versus Nathaniel Wood. Um, Nathaniel Wood just being signed by the UFC from Cage Warriors. Really, really, really exciting fighter. Um, ironically, his nickname's The Prospect, which I totally get. Uh, I did take this fight to bet it. I am really shocked, actually, that... The line is where it is. It's at minus 300. I mean, I don't necessarily disagree with it because I think Johnny, Johnny Eduardo was on his way out. Uh, definitely, he got absolutely smoked by Matthew Lopez in his last fight, which, you know, I said Lopez has got a high ceiling, but, you know, in his last fight, he didn't really show up. So you're sort of questioning the level of competition that Johnny Eduardo has just been smoked by. Um, Nathaniel Wood, like I've just mentioned, up-and-comer, great, exciting fighter, uses low kick. Well, he sort of kicks to the ankles. It's really weird. He does it in every fight. Seems to send his fighter, his opponent off balance all the time. Um, and he can take damage as well. Uh, I, f I forget the I forget the fight fighter's name now. But really, really, really good fight to watch. Uh, I'll just, in fact, I will just quickly uh, look this up because I think if you're if you are wanting to watch tape on this guy, it's it's a really, really good fight to watch. Um, Josh Reed, that's the guy. So second to uh, it wasn't his last fight, it was the fight before that Josh Reed, go and watch that Wood took some took some heavy damage in that fight and ended up coming back to winning, uh, to actually finishing Josh Reed and that was Josh Reed's first loss on his record as well so yeah, I'm really really high on Nathaniel Wood and I'm just, I'm a bit annoyed that the bookies have got this one pretty right in my opinion um, I think Wood's going to 
is going to knock him out as well. So, I mean, even those, even that line, I think it's like minus two, three, five or something for for Wood to knock him out. If like, or, or is that the fight not to go the distance? I'm not sure, but either way, I think Wood's gonna Wood's gonna finish him. He's minus money to finish him. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 not. I, I don't really like the lines to bet it, but I am confident Wood gets the win. Um, finally, we've got Jared Brooks against Jose Shorty Torres. Now Jose Torres is has got some real hype behind him. You know, he's champ, champ, champ. Um, he's you know he, he he's just an he is a great talent, you know. He's uh, he's he's got a, a wrestling background, but it's his striking, his Muay Thai that shows in his fights. But I think this is going to be a tough fight for him, and it is a fight that I was going to bet. Uh, I did tape it. I love the line. I love the plus money on Jared Brooks. Um, Brooks has got really good wrestling. Ironically, he doesn't set the, the the takedowns up very well, but he's just that quick. At shooting in and locking his hands behind his opponent's bodies, picks them up and dumps them to the mat. Not the he hasn't got the greatest top game, but when his opponent gets up, he'll just dump him again. He'll he'll do it. He'll just rinse and repeat totally. And I really, I really, really like. I was really tempted to bet the plus money on Jared Brooks because I think there's so much value in it. The two things that put me off though, the first one is the loss against Diverson Alcantara, who by the way is also a legit guy. But he lost that fight where I thought he clearly won. He clearly won at least two rounds. Potentially could have been a 30-27. I, I, honestly, I'm shocked that Jared Brooks didn't walk away with, with that win. Um, so be, I think the reason why the judges may not have scored it to Brooks is because Alcantara did ke- keep get did keep on standing up in the fight. And I think that the judges must have liked that they must have liked the fact that he could stand up without getting control too much off his back the second reason i can't bet this um and decide ultimately decided against it is i think it's going to be a split decision um i've just got a feeling it's going to be so back and forth it's going to be so many scrambles um i think the judge is going to have a hard time picking a winner i think it's going to be a split decision and you know, I'm I'm just I don't want to play about with that. If I think a fight's going to be a split decision, I'll just not bet it because it's just close. It's too fine fine margins for my liking. So that's it for the podcast. Um, just to run over my bets once more, I've got three point five units on Julio Arce at minus one fifty. I've got two point five units on Sam Alvey at minus one twenty, and I've got four units on Desmond Green at minus two fifty. Um, if you're listening to the podcast on the Newsom MMA YouTube channel, it's also available on the Newsom MMA MMA website too, along with so much additional content surrounding all aspects of MMA. It's got something for everybody on there, from betting advice to prediction videos, not just from myself but from the MMA community as well well some really solid sharp guys producing free content for you every single week and um, we've got specific com- content coming from heavy duty fight management i've also just um just spread my wings a little starting to do uh some media events as well so i was down at acb in nottingham to cover that um i've also got a couple of events coming up very shortly that i'll be announcing uh, over my social channels on twitter and facebook um, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Also check out my sponsor Newsome Newsome MMA, which is CBD Life UK. Uh, you can access their offers from my sponsorship by clicking any of the banners on the Newsome MMA website, and you can also get fifteen percent off your first order by using promo code Newsome MMA. So don't miss out on those offers. Uh, as always, if you are on YouTube, please like, subscribe, comment. I'll I'll always try and get back to you. I love talking fights. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Newsome underscore MMA. You can follow my Facebook page at Facebook forward slash Newsome MMA. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot for listening. And uh, we'll see you back next week for an awesome card at UFC 225. Thank you.